Hey everyone, this episode contains discussion that some viewers may find disturbing. If you are affected by anything that we talk about on today's show, you can find links for support in the description. Okay, so I don't know if you ladies know, but in 2001, Portugal decriminalized the use or the personal use of drugs. And as a result, the rates of overdose, HIV infections and associated crimes all went down. Now, recently, several U.S. states have also voted to legalize the use of drugs, specifically marijuana, but the state of Oregon has gone one step further and decriminalized the personal possession and use of drugs such as cocaine, methamphetamines, and opioids. I wanted to ask you ladies, do you think that the personal possession and the decriminalization of drugs should also be happening in the United Kingdom? And what do we think the knock-on results are going to be? Do we think that prisons are going to see a reduction in addicts or are we going to see an increase of addicts in society? Yeah, I think this should pretty much be happening worldwide, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) I think that, you know, whenever we talk about drugs, we talk about drug overdosing and drug addiction. And on the topic of drug overdosing, There was an article that I read that stated that the criminalization of drug possession does not reduce the amount of deaths um, that happen from drug related incidences. And um, as a testament to that as well, there's a festival in the UK, there's a rave called Secret Garden Party. And more than one rave does this, more than one festival does this. But just as an example, Secret Garden Party in 2016 said that they were going to have a drug testing tent. And so you can go there and you know, make sure the drugs that you're gonna take are legit and they're not faulty and they're not gonna cause something bad to happen to you. And the year that they did that, they reduced their drug related incidences by 95% compared to the year before. Wow. Um, literally. So I just think that when there is the threat of imprisonment for, rec- for uh, recreational use, there is no safety net for people who want to use drugs but don't want to abuse drugs. Um, And then on the topic of addiction as well, like I think not all drug use leads to addiction, you know, and (laughs) England is so obsessed with alcohol, like alcohol is so much in our culture. We drink all the time when we're happy, when we're sad, at Christmas, at birthdays. Um, But the topic of alcoholism is not as attached to the topic of drinking as um, the topic of addiction is attached to drugs. And it's not to say that drug abuse doesn't happen because obviously it does. But I think if we actually want to reduce the problems, then throwing people in jail for having a baggie doesn't actually do that. And so with Oregon, because I think they they got it right and we should all follow suit. Oregon, um, yeah, like you said, Sophie, they decriminalized the personal possession of a lot of drugs. And if you're found with the possession of um, some of the illegal drugs, then you might get a fine and you might have to have a health assessment by um, a certified drug and alcohol counselor, but you don't go to jail. How does going, how does sending these people to jail help people make smart decisions? How, you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, I think Oregon did it right. And I think everyone else should follow suit because drug abuse is like a health issue and not a criminal issue. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that and that I think that drug abuse is not a criminal issue and I think it just speaks to a few episodes ago when we were talking about prison and how we don't think it is a reform a place of reform or correction so I never think it's the right place for anybody who has um an addiction to go it 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 doesn't make any sense to me like for me it's as you said it's more of a health problem versus it's being actual criminal activity now do I think the UK should decriminalize it (laughs) <laughs> listen i may be on the bias end of of this i listen my opinion is biased so i just have to say it there i'm gonna say no and the reason why i'd say no is because i'm not a partaker in the los drogas it's just not me um, and so it does not affect so for me the reality of it being criminalized or decriminalized for me makes no difference to my life so i can almost be ignorant in the fact and say Well, it makes no difference to me, so I'm just going to say no. But I also want to take this opportunity to obviously learn and hear other perspectives and see what are the benefits of, you know, the cocaina for being legal or being decriminalised so that I can understand why 
it's a good move because when I was reading about Portugal, I understood that it lowered um, some like overdose rates in regards to death and also with HIV rates and things like that. But it still had like an adverse effect on their people and they're still dealing with the long-term effects from that. So I don't, I don't see the win here. If, if that's, if that's, yeah, I don't see the win. I think that's a really good point that you're making, Anissa. And I think this law that was brought in into Portugal, I think we have to be aware that it was brought in because there was such a high rate of addiction. It wasn't brought in for the use of recreational use of drugs. It was brought in because people were overdosing. And then I watched this video on BBC News and it was talking about the history of drugs in Portugal. And basically because they were under a dictatorship um, and when they came out from under the dictatorship, people were looking into different types of freedom and they were free to try drugs and because what was brought into the country in terms of the media news health news whatever was very restricted when drugs came in there was no buffer for people to understand how dangerous they could be so people were experimenting left right and center and it led to a very very high rate of addiction overdose hiv infection via spreading of needles or reusing of needles or people sharing needles so they brought it in because people say it doesn't actually help addicts to put them in prison. There's actually a higher rate of overdose for people that come out of prison who were addicts than for people who, you know, go through some sort of treatment in order to get better from having an addiction. Um, and I think that when I talk about this, I'm talking like, I'm not really here for even recreational drugs, to be honest, because I don't think that they... I don't think they do anything to help people in terms of health wise. Like when I'm talking specifically for health, I think that I don't know if they do anything for health. I think they're to probably to relax people or to have a good time, which I'm not opposed to either of those, but using drugs, I don't, I don't know about that. That's what I'd say, but I definitely see the purpose and I definitely agree that they should be decriminalized because People aren't going to come forward if they have an issue with drugs, if they know they're going to face court time. Families aren't going to recommend their family members to come forward or to go get help if they can get arrested um, at a police station or arrested at a hospital just for having possession of drugs. So I look at it from a health perspective and I think definitely it's going to help a lot of people by not putting the, the blame on them for, as Luanda said, something that isn't a criminal issue, it's a social issue. I hear Here's the thing, that. guys. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say a point. Like, I heard her and I understood that. And now that kind of mm -hmm. sways my thoughts. But go ahead, Luanda, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so as you said, Anissa, if you don't partake in Los Durogas, that is Los absolutely Durogas. fine. Like, if, it's not, if it's not for you, Sophie and Anissa, that's absolutely fine. But the reality is people are going to use drugs for recreational purposes, whether you yeah. particular people, you two, partake or not. Whether you guys, you ever Sophie or Anissa, <laughs> approves or disapproves or thinks it's good or thinks it's bad, people will experiment. People will take drugs. That is just yeah. the reality of the situation. Yeah. So when you're at that age, when you're like a teenager and you're going to festivals and you're out with your friends and you're going to your first raves and all of those things, you are gambling. You are literally gambling every single time because you don't actually know what you're taking. And so most of these overdoses that are happening, that I'm the ones that I'm thinking of is not people they're not people trying to commit suicide. They're not people trying to do damage to their bodies. Like I said, not everyone that wants to use drugs wants to abuse them. So the yeah. way that we can, you know, encourage people left, right and center to, oh, stay for one more. Oh, have another drink. Oh, I'll buy the next round. Let's do, we have, we're so accepting of alcohol within our society, which is a type of drug, but we've been socially conditioned to turn our nose up at these different types of, you know, weed or mandy or cocaine or all of those things. You would never go to a Christmas dinner and have like a line of Coke with your turkey. People would think you're insane. But the reality is that people are going to use these drugs whether you know whether we partake or whether we you know agree or disagree and so now the question becomes like how are we going to keep people safe and criminalizing yeah. them does not keep them safe like i said the article that, that i read says the criminal criminalization of drugs does not reduce the amount of death related uh, drug related deaths so if that's what we're worried about, actually the criminalization isn't helping to solve that problem. So how yeah. are we actually gonna help people either trying to overcome an addiction? And like I said, I, I get like, you know, a little bit irritated that, 
you know, we always associate drugs with addiction, but we don't always associate drinking with alcoholism. But even if someone does have an issue, like you said, Sophie, you're not really going to go for help because you're scared of what can I or can't I say if I'm going to get myself in trouble. And then it becomes like, how are you keeping the kids safe? Because every year at Freshers, all of these babies are trying their first pills, are trying their first lines, and they yes. don't know what they have in their hands, and they don't know where it's coming I'm, from. Can, no, I'm sure the, not the babies. Can, 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 can I come in babies. on that one? Can I come in on you that can, one? Because I feel, can. I feel like it's a little, a little unfair when you're saying, you know, people are going to take that whether you agree or not with it, Sophie and Anissa. Because for me, I'm just like, that's just my opinion. Like, I'm not judging people for taking it. If you want to take drugs, like, for me, if my friend was taking it, I would want to make sure that they're staying safe. And I'm like, cool, no problem. I probably need to be a bit more aware because at the end of the day, it's not just people who are, like you say, an overdosing, but sometimes they can end up in an unsafe position because they're on drugs. And I think that when we're talking, yeah, I just, I just feel like I don't even drink alcohol. So even that, talk about oh but with the al- I don't drink alcohol because I agree alcohol is just as much a drug every glass of alcohol that yeah. people drink is going to affect them it kills brain cells like no matter yeah. how much you drink whenever you drink whatever that's why I'm saying I'm specific because unless you're going to tell me that taking drugs helps your health or doesn't affect your body in a negative way like I think me saying that I'm not really here for it is not because I'm trying to stop people's fun but even saying People are going to take it and they're more at risk because they don't know what they're taking. I guess for me, I'm just like, if you don't know what you're taking, like, wait for, like, a trusted dealer or someone that you know has a good source of something. The trusted dealer is always... Obviously, people are going to go for that route. The trusted dealer is always going to be the route that you'll take. But even the most trusted dealer, I'm saying, you still don't know what it is. You don't. They don't. But but isn't that more scary? That's the bit that doesn't make sense to me because I'm saying, like, for me, like, growing up, that's the bit that, that's the thing, like, they showed those really scary videos in school about that girl that took ecstasy and then her brain swelled and then they said, don't take drugs. Like, <laughs> I mean, so like, like, can I just say that's that? What, I, love, I love the fact that those videos worked for at least one person. And the thing they, is, do you know, for me, it wasn't, <laughs> do sorry. you know Anissa coming? I can yes, see let, coming. Let, sorry, let me just jump, <laughs> let me just jump in. I think though, you know, I know we're saying a lot like if we decriminalize it, people may feel more confident going forward saying they have an issue. But I I I agree and disagree in that um regard because I think a lot of the time the reason why people don't come forward is also because of perception. And I don't know if the law would change that. There is a perception, you know, especially if you're from a certain environment, certain culture, people who have a addiction to drugs or partake in drugs they are viewed a certain way but the people who sell drugs are revered in a different way so it, it's a, yeah. it's it's about perception and i think perception also led me to like i've never touched a drug in my life i've never even smoked a cigarette it's just not my bag but um it's just n- never been my style really but a lot of that also came from me being younger and my perception where i grew up it was just like Okay, you saw the chab smoking cigarettes. I was like, oh no. And then like anybody who was on drugs or even smoking weed, like they were just acting like, and I hate to say it, but this is how people will say, and this is where perception comes in. They'll be like, oh, she's a nitty. He's a nitty. It's like this derogatory term. So you're almost programmed to think, oh gosh, like absolutely not. Like I do not even want any parts in that. So I think that was where I came from. But I think a lot of people who don't come forward, if they do have a drug abuse problem, it's not as much law I think it's really about perception because it's yeah. that you could be seen as an idiot basically I agree with that but I think perception does fall into the law because that's why that's exactly why I always compare it to alcohol because that's why I said we don't have these conversations on this level because you want to talk about um okay. someone who's a nitty and someone who's a dealer but what's the difference between that and someone who's at the bar and someone who's pouring the cocktail do you see what I'm saying but in the in our current culture it's so celebrated to be drinking you go out with your friends and it's like oh i could drink you under the table oh yeah well challenge me then i'll get 10 shots of tequila (coughs) i'll get 15 it's a competition it's a way to beat your chest it's like it's something to be proud of like oh i had all of this and i didn't even pass out or oh i had a blackout um a night of blackout oh so funny and it's like this hilarious acceptable thing whereas if you were to tell all of those stories but switch wine with weed or switch a beer with a line of coke like people are going to be worried for you. And I'm not saying that they should be more or less worried, but I'm saying that there isn't a kind of 
freedom within our society to talk about these things where people feel safe um, to admit, okay, now I'm doing this and I'm doing it too much. Or, you know, I had too many drinks or things like that. Like I remember when I had my first blackout from drinking, I was traumatized. I was horrified. I couldn't fathom the fact that I'd lived a night and I didn't remember it. And I went to work and I told my friends, I was like, guys, what happened? I don't remember anything past 9 PM. And they laughed, like everyone found it hilarious. And I was like, I've never been more disgusted with myself in my life. Like, how don't is this so laugh. normal? Right, it is, no but it was normalized. It was completely normalized. And people were looking at me like, oh my gosh, you're, you're how old are you? have just now had your first blackout. And I'm like, what? But is that, could be, that could be a culture thing as well, though, Luanda. Like, yeah, British people love culture. to drink. Exactly. Like, it's really, that's what I'm No, but if I even. even with that. But if I even have a little piece of rub cake, my mum will call me an alcoholic. Like, I think it's a culture thing. Like, British people, I'd love, love to drink. Why well, could my mum will say, oh, no. no. <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> I think it really depends as well on the circles that you move in because I don't think like a lot of my friends like don't drink as well. So I think it really does depend because if I said that I had a blackout from drinking, like I yeah, I think it is a scary thing. Um, but I think one of my friends wouldn't be saying that. So I think it really does depend like who you're friends with, who you hang out with, and I just think that. <sighs> The drugs thing has been used so much. So I don't think, no, that's what I wanted to say. In terms of alcohol, I think one of the reasons it doesn't happen in our society is because a lot of people are making money off of alcohol. And that's the reason why they try to make it much more a celebratory thing because massive companies are backed up with the sale of alcohol and the production of cigarettes and things like that because you're right, Luanda, there is no much more of a, a health risk than from taking those things as to taking drugs that are currently illegal. Um, and I think that the breaking down the stigma, and that's what they said in Portugal, has to go hand in hand. They were saying you can't say there's soft drugs and there's hard drugs or have this um, association of the junkie and then the person who only use it recreationally. We need to break down all of it and really allow people to be free and open with these conversations, as you're saying, because we need to be able to differentiate between those people having a good time and those people who need help and no one should feel bad about being in either camp. Mm, facts. Well said. Oh, nothing else to say, ladies? No, <laughs> I mean, what I was going to say was really random, but I don't know if anybody has the answer, so I don't really want to... I'll just touch on it very lightly. Anyway. I was watching this documentary the other day about this North Korean defector, and she was saying that, like, for medicine, a lot of them in North Korea would t use, like, crystal meth or something as, like, medication. Whether it actually worked, I don't know, but they were just too poor to pay for any other medication. So that's a thought. Yeah. I don't know if some of this drugs Oh, yeah, healing. no, I was going to touch on that, Sophie, because there are actually so many benefits to um, weed like so many health benefits. And I remember my friend at school, she had a lot of issues with her back and she kept going back and back to the doctors and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her, but she was in so much pain. And then he gave her like the license to grow and smoke her own weed. And I have another friend as well who smokes every day legally because she has to, to get rid of her pain. So there are um, benefits for using everything in moderation. I just forgot to make that point earlier. Oh, no, See, I, I, think think that's, I think that's also. a good point to make. Like, Thanks, Anissa. Like and we and we probably don't have time to talk about it now, but I want to know, because obviously there's people with cancer who will use medical marijuana as well, so that definitely. Yeah. I want to know if there's benefits to like having cocaine and methamphetamines and opioids and heroin. That's what I want to know.